Warning, this content may be upsetting or disturbing to some audiences. What are the creepiest urban legends from your area? This isn't an urban legend, but it might as well be. There is this vending machine in Seattle that is filled with rare and valuable soda cans, many of which are out of production. Nobody knows who stocks the vending machine, and the one time it needed repairs, nobody saw who took it to get repaired. We have a chair that's been untouched since the 1960s in our school's boiler room. The janitor swears that a boy got locked down there by these other kids the day before summer break and died from the heat. He claims that the chair moves and that the door handle moves like he's still there trying to get out. Not my current area, but one of the primary schools I went to had a few trees in the back corner of the field with a mountain of dirt. There were rumors that it was haunted with horses, of all things lol, there was one black horse that was evil. And if you sat under the trees and closed your eyes, you could hear the horses. It wasn't until I was older that I found out the school was built on an old racing ground and it closed down after one of the jockeys poisoned a competitor's black horse. There's one that I'm actually connected to, there was this friend I had in third grade, he was cool and we had a lot of the same interests, he always sat with me at lunch and played with me during recess. One day he was acting weird, he said that there were bugs in his brain I asked him if he was okay but he never responded, I didn't see him at lunch or recess either. He didn't come to school for three days, so I asked the teacher what happened to him, and she just said it's not your business, I never saw him again. Afterwards, other kids in my class started making up bullshitty stories about how he ran into the woods and drowned in the lake, or got kidnapped by an escaped convict, and as his friend I was obviously very offended by these kids making horror stories out of the sky I really cared about, now 10 years later, the kids in my town are still perpetuating these myths. I just think it's crazy that this generation of kids who are literally infants when this happened are still talking about it like it's an urban myth, none of them know the true story, and neither do I, but they sure as hell don't know that I knew this kid who they believe these legends about. Black shucks, big, black, ghostly slash demonic dogs with glowing red eyes that are supposed to be omens of death. They generally appear on roads at night. There's apparently a few around town and some drag chains too. Also one is actually a bear, but I have no idea why we have a ghostly demonic bear because we don't even have normal bears in this country. I live in Romania and as a kid the most common legend was the black ambulance that would steal kids and harvest their organs and that kids bodies were to be found a few days later abandoned on a field with some money for the funeral. Also, in my town our parents would never let us go to the cinema because there was this legend about a man who wound put AIDS infected needles on the seats. We had one called Joey the Clown, nearby is a disused Victorian railway which has been transformed into a 20-ish mile path for people to walk, jog, cycle etc and links different parts of the city, just as the rail line would have, before that it was just disused and didn't have tarmac or anything. Just mud, grass and there were no gates in the side doors of the tunnels, the tunnels are really dark in there and we used to hang around in there when we were kids. We became aware of the urban legend of Joey the Clown who was a lunatic who ran away from the circus, kidnapped a baby and hanged it by its feet upside down from one of the pipes above the tunnel right into the path of an oncoming locomotive which he also jumped in front of. Rumors still persist that people have seen Joey's ghost in the tunnels and if you were brave enough to go in the tunnel at night you would hear him laugh, hear a baby cry and the sound of the locomotive. My mother uses this to her advantage when I was a kid though by telling my sisters and I that Joey the Clown preys upon children who wear odd socks and who refuse to wear clean underwear. So of course we'd all be wearing matching socks and make sure we had pristine underwear on when we ventured down to the old railway. We have three mysterious men in a car called the Guardians, yes that's what we call them, along Montana Highway 464. People have told experiences where they have car trouble and three men in a car drive up and help them out. Other people talk about headlights that disappear in places where they shouldn't disappear. We also have a Native American in a jean jacket and jeans who materializes in front of cars before they can swerve out of the way. When the driver checks for a victim, no body is found. We have little people, like 6 inches tall, that live in our forests. They stay well hidden unless you're all by yourself and vulnerable, then they like to mess with you for fun. A beggar slash homeless man in Barry, Vermont. I've met him, but I can't remember his name. He was just a rough looking 40 years slash o guy that wasn't all there, and he would dance if you gave him any money. 
He was usually sort of out of it, but he wasn't drunk or anything. He may have just been mentally worn out from drugs. People in town insisted that while he stayed on the local shelter to sleep at night, his family was actually rich. They said he pretended like he was fried, and that he knew Shakespeare and was way smart. I heard he stayed in shelters to spy at his family after an argument he had with his dad 20 years before about a mysterious death in the family. I can't remember the whack name he got, but locals feared and respected him just by his reputation. I want to say it was the dancing daddy, or something similar. There used to be an insane asylum by my house in the 70s. It is probably 5 minutes away from my house if that. But, they tore it down in the 90s because it was just a giant eyesore, and had a dark history of mistreating patients. There is a cemetery on the property with hundreds of unnamed people who died there. In the early 2000s, Walmart bought the land and wanted to build a Walmart there since you would be able to see it from the highway. They excavated and such, and the day before they were set to start construction a huge landslide happened in the middle of the night that blocked the highway for days. If it would have happened at rush hour tons of people would have died. Ultimately, it was deemed unsafe territory to build on, so it remains empty. Except for all the bike trails through the area. But no one ever rides during nighttime lol. I guess the people who died there didn't want to be chilling underneath a Walmart style 10. There's an abandoned mental asylum near where I used to live. People would of course say it is haunted and dare one another to go there at night. But the weird thing is, it draws people in. If you find yourself driving late at night, you might end up driving on the grounds of the asylum out of nowhere. This happened to me and my mom once, somehow we got off at the wrong exit, several exits from our normal exit, and wound up on the grounds of the asylum shouldn't even be possible. There are gates that are supposed to be closed and locked. I remember my mom and I were freaked out, and for a second I thought I saw faces looking out from the windows of the asylum, lights flickering on and off, we managed to find our way out through the main gate again shortly after. Not really creepy, but there's one house in my hometown that is said to be haunted. There's a tray with a golden teapot on it, and the tray has scratch marks on it. That tray has been sitting in the same location for years, remaining completely untouched, and still, to this day no one has touched it. Some of my friends insist that it's haunted, there's also an urban legend about how an electrician, or someone with a similar job, fell off of a ladder while setting up one of the light in the middle school gym. His ghost is said to haunt the gym at night whenever the lights are turned off. Rural Western Maryland, been researching folklore for our class, we have a few but here's one of my personal best, Legend of the Bean Sucker. The story of a man who wanted to scare a couple as they were coming home in a carriage, back in the late 1800s. He stuffed his mouth full of beans and jumped in front of their carriage. It was said the driver was angry, so he chased the man down the railroad tracks by the path, until the man, the bean guy, ran into an oncoming train. It was said when they found the body, there was no head. Since then, people say you can hear the bean sucker's head rolling around or find beans on the ground. Maybe not the creepiest, but there is evidence that the train part may have happened around that time, which makes the reality factor even more real. There is a large burial ground for people who know too much and are liability, mostly drug rings, out on a part of the reservation that no police or tribal police have jurisdiction to be able to investigate. Unfortunately I heard about and so did my friends in high school and we thought it was just a legend. Well last year I learned it was a real. I had a friend who got out the drug ring and showed it to me. Flathead Lake Monster The Flathead Lake in western Montana is the largest body of fresh water this side of the Great Lakes. 18 miles wide, 26 miles long, 400 plus feet deep. People have seen the FLM breach the surface looking like the back of a serpent type creature. My theory is there are some monstrous 25 foot long sturgeons hiding out down there, but who knows. It's not really a known creepy urban legend, but in the 1800s in the Oahe Mountains in Idaho there was a group of hunters staying in a cabin and after failing to come back to their families a search party was sent out to look for them, they found the cabin, locked from the inside, with the window also locked from the inside. And they found all of the hunters dead with their heads crushed, no one knows who did it or how. But the incident repeated itself in like the 1970s or something. 
Recently on a local Facebook group about Mai and the neighboring village there have been rumors of a dancing man only a couple of people have seen him but they say he wears an old gas mask and black clothes, and can be found dancing at night on the beach or can be seen walking the hill in a groovy stride. Also he disappears when people look away and then look back, it's me. I'm the dancing man. Become a cryptid is part of my bucket list and I can now officially cross it off. There's a small graveyard out the back of Cranebrook that a haunted by the ghost of Sarah Marshall. We and my mates went there one night didn't see much except we found fingerprints all over the windscreen of the car, we left almost immediately. In San Antonio there's an urban legend of ghost kids leaving handprints on your car if you park near the train track. A school bus collided with a train back in the 1940s or so and supposedly if you leave flour slash powder you'll see small handprints. There's an enormous wooden railroad trestle not too far from me, tracks are still in use, and the legend goes that one day in the 1940s when the area was super rural, a teenage boy decided to kill himself, as the road passing under the trestle was the only way to access the houses beyond it at that time, he elected to hang himself from the beam directly above the road so his parents would be forced to see him when they returned home, I normally don't believe in this sort of thing. But if you look closely you can still see marks in the timber above the road that looks suspicious like a rope rubbed against it, draw your own conclusions. There's a place in my county like 10 to 15 minutes from my house called Bostick Brickyard. Legend goes that it was a slave owner's property and that he killed all of his slaves and dumped them in the swamp there. If you go out to the swamp at night and yell throw something, you hear something being thrown into the water. If you keep yelling, you can hear it get closer. I'm getting chills because I've personally experienced it a few times and it's creepy as FCK. One time, I and a group of like 5 made the mistake of using a Ouija board there and we heard a distant scream. Fking terrifying. There's also a legend in the same place that a green banshee will chase you out of there, but nothing's happened to me, yet. Another one is this little church slash girl school that sits not too far off from the gates of hell cemetery I mentioned in my other comment. There are a few different rumors about it. The one I was always told was a that a nun hanged herself in the open bell tower, and that on certain nights you can see her body swinging still, I've also heard that a nun went crazy and killed some of her students before being stopped, my mother was a wild thing, and her and her friends actually climbed up and touched the bell as a teenager lol, they've actually renovated the interior a few times, once a restaurant and a bed and breakfast, but even after that people there said weird SHT would happen, like chairs sliding across the floor, and shadowy figures in the bell tower, super spooky. At a site in the woods where people were supposedly lynched, there is an indention beneath the hanging tree where the people's feet would lightly drag while hanging. People claim that if you fill the hole in and wait overnight, they say that the swinging feet of those lynched will visibly re-drag marks in the sand. In Erie, Angola, there is something called Pigman. The story is about this farmer who hated to be bothered. These kids every day would go bother him. So to warn the kids he would chop pigs heads off and put them on sticks and put them in front of his house to warn people off. One day he was extra busy and these kids messed with him, he kidnapped them and cut off their heads one by one making the other kids watch what was going to happen to them. He put the heads on sticks and put them in front of his house. The real story behind it is the most horrific train accident in Erie Angola. More than 50 people died. Two got away. There's more to the story. Look it up if you want to know more smile. I live in a town in California called Martinez. John Muir's house is there and people keep saying it's haunted. I cannot even count those cringy exploring haunted house at 3 a.m. 666 videos that I see on Instagram. The whole Skinwalker Ranch thing is like 5 miles from my house. The Huaca IPO also known as the Night Marchers, are the spirits of ancient Hawaiian warriors who have been cursed to march the islands for eternity. The Night Marchers are said to march in a single line, often carrying torches and weapons while chanting and playing drums. To protect yourself, you must lie on the ground face down in respect. Otherwise, the Night Marchers will kill you, or so they say. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.